Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you guys are new, then my name is Jadine, and if you guys are not new, then of course, welcome back. So today I was making um, oxtail for dinner, and I decided that I wanted to show you guys how to make it, or I wanted to show you guys how I make it. Now keep in mind that this is how I do it. You can do it differently if you please, and if you want to do it the same way, then that works perfectly too. But obviously, you're on this video because you're trying to figure out how to make oxtail, okay? Yes, ma'am. I feel like I highlighted all the steps that are necessary to make it in this video. Did it take me a long time? Yes, because I don't have a pressure cooker. So I was just using a regular pot that I had to make this and if you have a pressure cooker then obviously the process would be quicker do I recommend going out and buying a pressure cooker no it's not necessary because obviously I made it in just a regular pot and I've made it several times in just a regular pot so you can definitely do that so before what I did was I had seasoned my meat from like the day before or normally I'll season my meat from the day that I come from the grocery store and I'll put it in Ziploc bags and put it in the freezer because I find that the meat tastes so much better when you season it ahead of time and like give it enough time to like marinate and stuff like that. You can season it the same day, you can season it before, whatever you choose to do is perfectly fine too. So I season it and then of course I start cooking it in the frozen state and everything you can wait for it to defrost and you don't have to you can do whatever you want with this part now i used brown sugar i could have used granulated sugar too because when i didn't have brown sugar i used i used the granulated sugar and i also could have could have just used browning so obviously it's already seasoned and everything and then i used the sugar like i was telling you because i don't know i feel like it gives it a more golden brown so i use the brown sugar just like a little spoonful and i'm gonna wait for that to brown if you're using browning then you can always just use the browning the very same way and when the oil hot you just put it in there so then i wait for the sugar to do that and then i start putting um the meat in So after I put the meat inside of the pot and like it started browning and stuff like that, I realized that the pot that I was using was a little bit too small so I transferred it to a bigger pot so that everything could be browned proportionately and cooked proportionately once it came to a point where like I started cooking it down and stuff like that. And then I prepared the seasoning that I was going to put on it eventually. What I put on it is green bell peppers. I really love green bell peppers or sweet pepper, whatever you call it. I used Irish potato, carrots, onions. Obviously, you guys see where I put the garlic in there too and I put my thyme in there too. And then what I ended up using also was like tomato and to season it I use whatever powder seasoning I already had and I use some crushed red peppers because I feel like these things need to be spicy so then everything else is kind of self-explanatory while we're going along I did go ahead and add some browning in there when I added the first set of water When I normally add water on there, when it cooks down and I need to add some more water, I add hot water. I don't know why. My mom always just said use warm water. I don't know, okay? I guess if you use cold water, then that... I don't know. I honestly don't know, and I don't want to be out here making stuff up. I don't know why I add hot water. Obviously, you could probably add cold water. I've added cold water before, and it cooked just the same. I don't know. See? These things are things that you can do or not do. You know, you can adjust 
whatever it is that I'm telling you guys right now. So guys, I called my mom and I asked her why you add um, hot water instead of cold because I feel like it's only right that if I'm going to potentially teach somebody how to make this, I give them the right instructions. So what she's saying is that um, the hot water keeps the, the cooking at the same pace. And the, when you add cold water to it, the cold water like cools the whole cooking. Drop the temperature. Right. And then, and then so it has to start start all over again am i making sense it has to start cooking all over again because you added cold water to what was hot water so it has to come to a boil again however the hot water would already be hot so the cooking continues it doesn't stop the cooking process yes. yeah mm -hmm. all right so that right there is why you add hot water instead of cold i mean i'm like i said i'm pretty sure that if you add cold water too it still cooks chances are it just takes a little bit longer to cook some because people use ice some people drop ice when my friend told me how to cook it first that's what she told me to put ice yeah some people use ice but either way when you use the hot water it continues mommy is dropping gems okay all right great <laughs> So now it's like at the stage where it's cooking down and I just added some water to it. So that's why there is that much water on there. But what I've been doing is like leaving them on like one side to cook for like 10, 15 minutes and then flipping them over on the other side to cook for like another 10, 15 minutes on like low heat. And then when the water kind of dries out, then I add some more and do the same thing again until it's cooked. Obviously, if I had a pressure cooker, this would be so much quicker, but I don't. And I don't know how to work pressure cookers because them things... The top will fly off and bunny up. I'm not really in at that. Like, me not making a pressure cooker burn me up. So this is where we're at. So now, hopefully, when the water goes all the way down on, like, this portion of it, then it is cooked because I put enough water to kind of, like, cover both sides so they both cook evenly. And then afterwards, I can probably throw, like, the seasoning and stuff like that in there. So this right here is what the oxtail looks like. Um, when it's done cooking and everything I went ahead and added some butter bean because I had that so I just decided to put it in there but I didn't show anything else after the last clip that you guys just watched because the process was pretty repetitive after that I leave it on one side for it to cook for like 15-20 minutes and then I flip it over onto the other side for it to do the same thing and when it got soft then I added the onion tomato sweet pepper and whatever else you guys saw in the plate and then afterwards like when I had like the last five minutes left then I added the butter beans because those were already soft beans and then this is obviously what it looks like when I've shared my dinner and plated everything then I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like but this is how I make my oxtail is this a how-to video I don't know Take what I said with a grain of salt. Make it work for you if it does. And if not, then sweetie, I don't know what to tell you. But this is what my oxtail looks like. And it tastes bomb. Okay, so good. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. You can change anything if you feel like you need to. Or you can do it the very same way and you are perfectly fine. But this is how I make my oxtail. You don't have to add the beans. Definitely don't have to. You could just make it without. I've made it without too. But I had the beans this time, so I decided that I wanted to add them. But you don't have to add them. You can do whatever you want with this process, you know? But that's it for this video. I hope somebody got some help out of this video. I hope this video helped somebody to make some very delicious oxtail. And um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the very next video as usual. Bye.